So here's the kit for Raspberry Pi 5 from Vilrose. And let's go through each one of the components. First, we have the Raspberry Pi 5. This is the 8 gigabyte version. Super nice. I love it. We'll look at it in more detail later. You then have the aluminum alloy case, but here it is. It's a nice case. You can see it has this fan. You can see the connector that connects to your Pi and will work with your Raspberry Pi operating system, which is basically the sign that as it gets hot, the fan will spin faster. You have a power supply. I really like that this one that comes with the kit is a 27 watt. And 27 watts is really what you're gonna need once you really are trying to get the most out of your Pi. So as you can see, pretty nice supply, USB-C, I love it. Then we have our micro SD card, memory card. It's from Samsung. It's 128 gigabyte, and it comes built in with Raspberry Pi operating system. So that's super convenient. We then have a micro SD card to USB adapter. And this can basically be used if you want to rewrite the content of the SD card as needed. So if you're doing any projects for you, you know, you don't want to use the built in Raspberry Pi OS, uh, then it comes pretty handy. And as you can see, you have your HDMI to micro HDMI cables. The Raspberry Pi has two ports that could connect for dual 4K display capability. So these come handy. Now, of course, we have this super nice storage bag. Let's rip it open. You can store all your stuff in here. It's really nice materials. I really like it and you can keep all your Raspberry Pi stuff in one place. We have this camera adapter module. So if you ever want to use a Raspberry Pi with camera project, computer vision, whatever, this comes handy. Now this is if you want to power your Raspberry Pi with an RTC battery. And then finally, we have a Raspberry Pi quick start guide. If you're a beginner, might want to use fancy manual, you have that option as well. Now let's talk some more about the Raspberry Pi 5. This is the 8 gigabyte version. The Raspberry Pi 5 has two to three times the speed of the previous Raspberry Pi. So obviously that comes with endless possibilities for new projects that you might have tried before and they were not as good with the 4 or even 3. So the Raspberry Pi 5 is built in using the RP1 IO controller package. Basically it, it even comes with USB 3 total bandwidth which is most faster transfer speeds. And you have a camera and DSi connectors that are interchangeable. So you can have one of each or two of the same. Some of the features I love, it comes with a power button, finally. You can see it here. It comes, like I said, with dual 4K capability. It comes with a real-time clock. As I mentioned, it has 8 gigabytes of RAM. It has dual band 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. It has Bluetooth 5.0 and Bluetooth Low Energy. It has micro SD card slot, two USB 3 ports, which can support up to five gigabytes per second operation. And then you have two USB 02 ports. And of course, what's different from just a regular small computer is that you have your 40 pin header, which allows you to do multiple applications to interact with the external world. And again, already said it, you have the power button. Who doesn't love the power button? Now let's take a look at the case. First, let's take the on off button, put it in place and make sure that the hole here for it, that hole lines up with the hole in the case there. So here's how it looks once installed on the outside. That's how it's to look on the inside with the hole of the button lining up with the hole in the case. Now let's take the thermal conductive pad, thermal conductive sticker, open it up and take it out and remove the sticker from one side. Then simply grab the top part of the case. There's this chip contact point and that's where we're going to apply the tape or the thermal conductive tape. Now we can go ahead and remove the top tape there. Next, we'll put the pie into the bottom portion of the case. There it is. That's how it should look. We have the Raspberry Pi on the case. You can see how this even line up. You can see how this line up, right? For the three connectors. You have the power button here. And then here's where the GPIO go. Let's go ahead now and proceed to connect the fan cable into the Raspberry Pi. Set it down in the surface as needed. So you can see I'm struggling to just do it in the air. There, there you have it. Now before I close it all up, if you do want to use the official Raspberry Pi active cooler, you're supposed to use the spacers. We're not going to use this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and close it all up. You can see it. It's all closed up. And then we can proceed to use the screws at the bottom. There. 
there you have it. Now you can also use this case with the camera module and the HD camera, right? And you have the camera module and HD camera screws here. And you have proper space to allow you to take the camera cable out, which is one part of that I really like for this one. Here you can see camera. And it has this area here for you to set up the camera, which is one part I really like about it. Um, not other cases don't necessarily have that. And I wanted to have that flexibility for doing projects with camera. And then you have the silicone pad. So let's go ahead and set that up. So to do that, basically you can flip it. You can see it has four holes. And these are basically adhesive that you take out and just go ahead and set it up right there. It has some extra grip now when you set it down. So again, and here I haven't used yet the camera screw mounts nor the spacers for open use or for use with the official Raspberry Pi Active Cooler. But it's pretty nice, it's well set up. We can use it for many things. It's well secured. You can push, you know, have the push button here. We still haven't inserted this micro SD card, but we could take this out and we could insert it. And I mean, it's ready to go. The right next step would be to open this up and put the SD card in. There you go. We go ahead and remove this right here so we can access it. We can go ahead here and insert. And then to take it out, you can pull from here easily in and out. And then protect it. You just go ahead and put this again. Now, as mentioned before, this came with a power supply and plug it up. And then, of course, we have here HDMI 0 and HDMI 1 ports. So here are the two HDMI cables. Disconnect here and connect to whatever you're going to plug in on the other side. And ready to go. So here we have the Raspberry Pi 5. Let's start it up. You can see the fans kicking in. There you can see the setup and the two monitors starting up. I have a keyboard and mouse connected. After completed the Raspberry Pi setup, we get to the Raspberry Pi operating system with the main window which we're looking at now. You can see, I mean, you have the different tabs here. After clicking on the Raspberry, you can pick whichever internet browser you want. And you have several different programs or applications, whatever you want to call them. You have your folders. And then, of course, you have your terminal where can you, and you can do a bunch of stuff. Um, we won't cover much in this video, but of course, you have, you can type sudo raspy config. And this lets you change several of your settings. Um, there's also some of that here on preferences, like screen configuration, Raspberry Pi configuration, and so on. So I wanted to just show you how it would look. So hopefully you found this video helpful. I'll be coming up with a bunch more Raspberry Pi specific videos. So make sure to check those out. If you like the video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and see you in the next one. Thanks.